I'm, I'm Don Samulak, President, U.S. Operations of Editage, Cactus Communications, and I'm here in London, in the U.K., at the Macmillan Science and Education Building in the Digital Science Offices, talking with John Hammersley, co-founder and CEO of Overleaf. So Overleaf is not only a collaborative tool, it's not only a collaboration of authors, it's a collaboration of services. Mm-hmm. It's collaboration with the publisher. It really is a collaborative tool on many different levels. Well, that may not have been your vision at the beginning, I'm wondering where you're looking to take that, because I, I can honestly imagine in certain sectors, mathematics maybe, physics maybe, <clears throat> that peer review is continued in the collaborative environment of Overleaf. Mm-hmm. And is, is there a possibility that it becomes a journal platform? Yeah, so, I mean, first of all, yeah, it was originally designed um, to make it easier for authors to collaborate, and that was kind of the, that was the pain that we felt as authors, as scientists. Um, but yeah, once you put a, a collaborative doc, a document in the cloud, which people can access, it naturally opens it up to lots of different services. And it was interesting that you started off with the word community, because actually a lot of our early integrations were with LaTeX, with the LaTeX community, um, so mathematicians and physicists um, who write and post to different forums, we provided ways for them to open their examples that they, they'd given in response to people that had questions and to open those in overly so they could collaboratively see the answer and see the example that they'd been working on. So this kind of teacher-student relationship, and, and we do have a lot of teachers and a lot of students using it at the moment for the teacher will set out a homework assignment, the students can all open a templated version of that homework assignment answer the questions, collaborate together if it's a group project, and then submit it through to their, their lecturer. And so you can then naturally extend that kind of model up into journal publishing, where overly for or the publisher provides a template um, for authors to use, um, for the appro- appropriate for the content that's being presented. Um, the author then writes their paper in Overleaf. They would submit it through to some sort of editorial service which could then provide checks on consistency and grammar and you know that everything was there from a, from a research paper point of view. You could then open it up and pass it through to peer review services. So at the moment you can submit your paper from Overleaf to a lot of journals but we're also working with some independent peer review services. So you can submit your paper to those services if you want to get an independent peer review. Um, we've also released a commenting platform um, within Overleaf, which actually people are using for informal review at the moment. Again, coming back to the student-teacher relationship, the teacher can leave comments within the article that the um, author can respond to. And I think one of the reasons it's popular is because you're all talking about the article. The, the comments and the reviews aren't separate in some, in some separate system where you have to then try and map back what that comment meant and how that related to the context of the paper. And that can sometimes be quite challenging. It can sometimes be quite challenging to understand what a reviewer meant if, the, if their review is sat on one side and the paper is, is in another place. So by having those inline comments and having those inline reviews, we're trying to make it easier for, for everyone, basically, to have a conversation and collaborate on a paper and then go on to be published. And you can publish to Overly for the moment. So we have a, a gallery. Um, primarily used for templates and examples, so if you're a teacher you can publish a template for students, or if you've written a particularly nice example of how to draw something in in the program or how to produce a nice CV, you can submit that as an example. Um, But you can also produce articles and submit them, and at the moment we get a lot of students who've maybe completed their coursework or their project report, and that's not something that would necessarily go on to be published in a journal, but Mm -hmm. they'd quite like to showcase it and share it with, with people to whom it's important. So they can publish that um, to the Overleaf Gallery and, and they can then share that and it's also retained the link with, with the paper that was created originally. So if they make any changes at a later date, they can publish a second version very easily and update it. So it's kind of, it's great as kind of a, um, as kind of a yeah, yeah, collaborative space which goes from idea through the writing process to review to publication. Um, but, but publishing in general and publishing in, in science is a very complicated process. Um, you know, publishing and, and the peer review process and finding appropriate peer reviewers um, you know, is challenging and requires management and requires effort. And that's why we're working with different partners within the publishing industry because 
you know, primarily we're you know, the founders of Overleaf are both scientists mm -hmm. by background, and we've built a great platform for authors to collaborate on, and we're focused on making it the easiest platform to use for writing and collaborating upon papers. Um, there are lots of other people and lots of other companies with a great deal of experience within the publishing space and what's needed and how it works. So we're trying to work with those as far as possible to provide a streamlined experience between the different the different processes and the different services. Yeah. So many of the things that you said are really quite uh, profound when you think about how the research community is not only getting connected but the publishing community and all the author support services, for example, Editage, we offer English language editing services, we offer peer review services, we offer a variety of services for authors. We reach out, we collaborate with Overleaf, we collaborate with publishers, publishers collaborate with Overleaf, and it's becoming a synthetium of, uh, of companies that create an environment for research, and that's very different than it was before. Overleaf isn't just for researchers, it's for anybody who wants to collaborate on a document can use Overleaf and get their value out of it. And, and it's worth saying, it's not just for research papers. It's what people use it for. You can use it for CVs, for posters, presentations. So especially if, you, if you've if you written a research paper, what it's quite easy to do with Overleaf is to take that content and then reformat it and represent it as a presentation or a, a poster. So you don't have to copy things out and write them out quite as much as you might have to do, um, might have had to do previously. And yeah, I think, I think generally what it's doing is it's putting the power of professional typesetting into the hands of um, the general public. With Overleaf, if you, you see what the, the, the types of version will look like as you start writing. Mm. So you can very quickly and very easily and very intuitively put together a document, see the output, and then be happy that you've had an easy way to write the content, but you've also got that look and feel that you want at the end. Yeah, so for people who may be listening that aren't in the mathematics, physics, chemistry uh, arena where formulas and, and the characters are um, uh, very specific and they can't move around. So Overleaf has, uh, has created an environment where you are, a typesetting environment is what you see is what you get uh, in the sense that it allows the structure to be put in place and that structure isn't going to be moved as a, a submission to a journal. Yeah, so, so what it does is it, it provides a, an interface for the author, which is convenient and useful, but on the, on the other side of that, you get structured output. So it means that what the, the publisher gets, what they can use to publish um, or to typeset formula, for example, um, will be exactly what you put in. Mm -hmm. They don't have to turn it into an image. They don't have to rekey it in and make mistakes, potentially. Um, the way you've entered that formula is then translated across exactly to what they can use to okay. publish it. So currently, in, in formulas, you have Greek characters and a whole bunch of things. Is there, are, are there language constraints? Can anybody be working in a variety of languages within uh, Overleaf at the current moment? Yes, yeah, so Overleaf supports uh, a wide variety of languages. and It's all thanks to LaTeX, actually. So LaTeX is a piece of software that's been going for about 40 years now. Um, and it was created originally for mathematicians, or primarily for mathematicians, um, because it, it sort of provides a really fantastic way for typesetting mathematical formulae really well. But that same precision has then been extended to allow, to allow people to write in different languages and with different character sets. You know, and, and obviously Greek letters and the like are very important in mathematics, and so it, it all came out of the same system. But you can, you can load up different packages, and we have lots of templates for different languages so that those packages are already pre-selected for you. Um, and then you can, you can start writing in, in Japanese, in Chinese, in you know, French, Spanish. It handles accents, it handles all the different um, features. And you can write in Hebrew, in fact, for example, someone recently posted a Hebrew template to the service. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the other thing as well. A lot of these templates are community developed. So um, we don't, you don't have to rely on on us as a company becoming experts in lots of different languages, the people who are the experts can provide um, templates which, which you can then use um, as a starting point for your document. So yeah, it's, it's very versatile. That's great. So thanks, John. It's been a pleasure talking with you as always. Don Samuelak, President, U.S. Operations of Editage and Cactus Communications.
here in the Digital Science offices in Macmillan uh, Publishing, talking with John Hammersley, co-founder and CEO of Overleaf. Thanks.